Everybody, my name is Kovi. My name is Cole. And I am Vanessa. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab, where we bring the science to you. And you may be thinking, like, hey, Kovi, um, why are you why are you at studio today? Um, shouldn't you be in space? And that is correct. I am in space, and I decided to bring the studio with me up to space so we can learn a little bit more about what's in the outer world besides Earth. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you download that lab manual at bit.ly slash couch potato lab so you can follow along with our journey to space. And um, if you have any questions, make sure to text um, at 306-570-1013. We love all your questions. So if you any have any comments or fun facts as well, um, we would love to hear that. Um, if you're going to talk to us through social media, um, use that hashtag couch potato lab so that we can find your questions and also you can get through to us through Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and TikTok and all that through at eyes youth and that is our handle and it's going to be a great time for today I decided to bring um, some few scientists that are actually experts um, at space so first we have to my left the wonderful wonderful Thank you very much, Kobe. My name is Cole. My pronouns are he and him. And I, first of all, I want to thank you so much for taking me <laughs> to space with you. I've always wanted to, to come to space. And, you know, on the journey, it was quite the long journey, I have to say, through the solar system, I was looking out at all of the cool planets. And I decided, as, as we were going through, I decided I figured out what planet I'm the most like. And that's Saturn. Because Saturn is a planet that has a whole bunch of rings around it. And I love to hula hoop. And I was actually 2008 um, local uh, middle years hula hoop champion uh, in the junior division. So uh, oh. I, I relate to Saturn quite a bit. Well, since we're talking about planets, uh, maybe I'll talk about what kind of planet I am. But my name is Kobe. My pronouns are he, him. And I think the m planet that kind of most resembles me would be Venus. Venus is super, super hot. And I think I am hot too. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, that's great. And I also saw a um a rabbit because in the past episode space safety we learned about like um different equipments to use for our like soil to capture soil and to test it and i actually found a like a weird kind of like rabbit creature on mars and yeah it's a it's a weird time uh, vanessa what are your thoughts on this rabbit creature on mars i kind of <laughs> like it i feel like there could definitely be a rabbit creature on mars but my <laughs> name is vanessa my pronouns are she and her and as we're going along with figuring out what planets we are I would say that I am Earth because as a human, among all the other humans, I know the most about myself and among oh. the planets, I know the most about Earth. So <laughs> that would be, <laughs> that would be that. who I am. And before we get too into it today, we would just like to take a moment to recognize that we are on Treaty 4 land right now, which is the traditional territory of the Neowak, Nakoe, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis Métis Nation. Please take a moment to recognize this as well and join us in acknowledging how grateful we are to share this land with those people. Thank you, Vanessa. While I was, um, I decided to take a trip out of our spaceship, and I noticed that I was like floating a lot, and like I like like I don't have any mass anymore, or something like that. Cause like on Earth, I'm like really heavy, but anywhere else outside of Earth, I'm I'm just floating by, and like I'm very confused. Um, but I see that you have a few things that call I do I do now Kobe that is true I'm um, on earth when we are back home where we normally film on earth Kobe is extremely heavy and that is I would say 100% muscle okay <laughs> from head to toe he's a very very heavy man but it's all it's all muscle but it's funny that you say that you don't have any mass anymore but you, even though we are in space and you might have experienced it you're floating or you feel a lot lighter you actually still have mass no matter where you go what has changed though is your weight and we're gonna Vanessa and I are gonna do a little bit of a demonstration here a quiz for you Kobe All right. uh, to help you get thinking about mass and weight now um, to start off I have uh, a package of straws here normal straws everyday straws this is what I use to drink uh, you know all my sodas with um, and this is 50 grams of straws all right okay, I'm gonna tell you that's straight up this is 50 grams of straws now Vanessa what do you have over there over here I have these three rocks there's one of them. This is my favorite one. And <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you just for free, 50 grams of rocks. 50 grams of rocks. Do you have a name for that our special rock over there? Um, Melissa. Melissa. Yes, <laughs> this is my <laughs> rock, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> so Vanessa has 50 grams of rocks over there. I have 50 grams of straws. Now my question to you, Kobe, mm -hmm. very simple. Okay. 50 grams of straws here, a lot of straws. Got it. 50 grams of rocks over there. There's only like three of them. Okay. Not very many. Which of these weighs more oh <sighs> okay i know i know rocks are usually heavier like if i compare like one rock and one straw like the rock's gonna be heavier but i think you, you you might be playing like mind games with me cole and i think probably i'm gonna say with the straws the straws are probably the package of straws because there's so many there is a lot there is a lot i'm mm -hmm. gonna say that the straws are heavier than melissa over there okay <laughs> well we're gonna put this to the test like kobe said uh, Vanessa only has about three rocks over there, where I probably have around 50 straws. So Kobe's guessing that because I have so many, so much more uh, stuff here, it's going to be heavier. So I've got my handy dandy scale here. We are going to put these on, and we are going to see how much this package of straws weighs. Uh, I'm going to zero it so that it gets back to zero, and here we go. Putting it on. Okay, so it looks like to me. 49.5, so 49.6 now, we'll round that up to about 50 grams. 50 so my 50 yeah. grams worth of straws weighs about 50 grams. Vanessa. All right, I have my three rocks. I'm just gonna throw them on my scale. There goes Melissa, little brother Avery, <laughs> um, and mom, Jessica. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just looking around. Right here I have 50.16. I'm gonna round that down to 50. So my 50 grams of rocks raise 50 grams. 50 grams, wait a minute. Wait, wait, is that the same thing? It is. It is yeah. the same thing. Oh. <laughs> it is the same thing. We did do a little <laughs> bit of a trick on you. I, I apologize, I'm a bit of a trickster. They call me the trickster of the Couch Potato <laughs> Lab. And that's because, yes, we, we have 50 grams of straws here. 50 grams of rocks, although it looks like there's so much more straws, because the straws have a lower mass, we just need more of them to equal out with a small amount of rocks, mm, okay? Mm. So part of the reason that we're talking about this is because like you said, Kobe, right now we're in space, 
we feel a lot lighter, okay? Because we're not on Earth anymore. And do you know the thing that's on Earth that causes us to weigh what we do? There's a there's a special name. It's a force. Do you know what it is, Kobe? Force. Um, I think back in episode two we talked about it, and I think it's it's gravity, right? Nine point eight one meters per second squared, something about that. It is gravity, Kobe. You are right. So the reason that we weigh a certain amount on Earth, the, our weight is always determined, no matter where we are, by the force of gravity. So our mass is never going to change. If I am on Earth, if I am on the moon, if I'm floating in the middle of space, our mass is always going to be the exact same. What might change, though, is our weight, because the f weight is calculated by the force of gravity that's pulling us down. Now, you mentioned that number, 9.81 meters per second squared. Mm -hmm. That is the acceleration at which we are pulled down towards the Earth. That's the acceleration of gravity on Earth. But that number is going to be different where we, uh, depending on where we are. So I'm going to do another demonstration, Ooh, okay? And I don't want this one to be too tricky either. I am a little <laughs> bit of a trickster, like I said. <laughs> but uh, I have a question for you. Uh, Vanessa, you can you can chime in too if you'd like. Okay. I have two objects here, two simple objects. An apple. This is actually a space apple that we picked on uh, Mercury on the way over. <laughs> and a hammer. This is n uh, just a regular hammer, not a space hammer. So we've got a hammer and an apple. Now I'm going to hold them at the same uh, uh, height and I'm going to drop them to, to the floor. And all you have to do is answer this question. Which one will hit the ground first? Ooh, Vanessa, what do you Very think? Simple. Um, when I hold the apple and hammer in my hand, when I did that earlier, I, the hammer is heavier in my hand. I feel like it'll go faster because it weighs more to me. That's mm. my guess. So hammer first. Hammer? Yeah. All right. I think it's going to be the apple because remember when chickens were very little, they um, thought that the sky was falling and it was actually an apple and I'm pretty sure it's the apple. Okay. So two different guesses here. Uh, Vanessa is going to go with the hammer. She thinks the hammer is going to hit the ground first. Kobe is going to say the apple. So I'm just going to hold them over the table here. I'm going to make sure that I get them at the right height. And again, I'm going to drop them or try to drop them at the exact same time. And I want Kobe and Vanessa, I want you to watch really, really carefully at which one hits the ground first. Okay, here we go. I'm going to drop them in the count of three. Three, two, one. Oh. Hmm. So which one was it? Uh, Did you see? Uh, maybe the same. I think they dropped at the same time. So Kobe, you first. are exactly oh right ooh, they nice. hit the ground at the exact same time so although like vanessa mentioned when she was holding both of these objects earlier um the hammer does feel a lot heavier mm -hmm. it might has it might have a bigger mass it doesn't actually matter because the force of gravity is going to act upon things mm -hmm. uh, in the same way we talked about that number 9.81 meters per second squared on earth that force that acceleration is going to be experienced by all objects no matter how big or how small they are so that means if we were in a perfect vacuum, which means that there was no air resistance, um, which we kind of are here in this spaceship, <laughs> um, <laughs> all objects are going to hit the ground at the exact same time because they are all moving at the exact same speed through that same acceleration of gravity. Mm. So that's how gravity works. So that is why I am floating around when I get to Mars or different other planets as well. And gravity is a, is a really big thing. And gravity is like very, very important in like some crazy things. Oh, like <laughs> like that thing. Oh my God. Oh is no. that a black hole? Oh no. Oh That's no. a black hole. It's coming straight for our oh ship. My God. <laughs> what do I do, Vanessa? Thank goodness I'm an expert on black holes. Oh. So, yes. What is a black hole? We're wondering. We don't know. It's over there, but maybe it won't come for us. So black holes are one of the most powerful forces in the universe. It's where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape it not even light. That's why it's a black hole. You'll be able to see a picture soon of a black hole. Yeah, there it is. So you can actually, like, we know that that's a black hole. You can see it, and it's because black, but black holes are invisible. We can't see the actual black hole itself because they don't reflect any light, but scientists know that they exist by observing light and objects around the black hole, which is why we can see the ring around the black hole, but not really the hole itself. So strange things are always happening around the black hole, but how do they get there in the first place? So black holes are formed when giant stars explode at the end of their life cycle, and that mm. explosion is called a supernova. If a star has enough mass, it will collapse in on itself down to a very small size. That happens when its inside fuel burns out. Okay, so due to the small size and enormous mass that the black hole has, because it used to be a giant star and then it gets really, really small, the gravity is so strong that it will absorb light and all the objects around it, even stars sometimes. And yes, we'll be able to see a special part of a black hole right here of the event horizon. It's a GIF, it just should loop, I think. And it's the special boundary around the black hole. 
and that's that's the event horizon and it's the point that everything even light once it goes past there it can't come back yeah so once it's that line kind of sort of in the middle and all around it's the light that you can see once you get past the event horizon you cannot come back that's when kobe predicted earlier today that it would uh you'd turn into spaghetti, which is true, because all your atoms would get pulled apart because the gravity is so strong. And we're going to be able to demonstrate kind of what happens to a star during the supernova right now. I have to blow up this balloon, though, so you two are going to have to give me some opinions on black holes. Well, I, w I, I will say one thing. I was looking at that, um, that video of the event horizon. That looks pretty scary. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if this black hole that's coming towards our ship uh, is any indication, I'm not... I'm not into being pulled apart into spaghetti, okay? I'm not, I'm not, not a big fan of that. I would prefer to be turned into a penne noodle, if anything. A penne noodle. Why because a penne they're a little noodle? Because they're pointy, and okay. uh, I feel like I could, you know, defend myself from potential enemies with those points that are at the end of penne noodle noodles. That's a so. that's a good one. Yeah. But yes, I got my uh, balloon all blown up. Thank you, Cole. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we're back. The satellite kind of malfunctioned a little we're bit. We're so far out into space. Yeah, I know. They oh just man. lost the signal. But we were talking about... Um, appreciate that. <laughs> um, appreciate Vanessa, that. What's, the, what's that term called when a star explodes again? That's a supernova. We're supernova. actually going to mm. create a supernova right away here. So it's going to be mm, quite, the, quite the exciting thing down here at the Couch Radio Lab. Mm. I think I'm ready to make my supernova. So this will be our star. It's our balloon with some tinfoil just wrapped around it. I used some tape just to secure it. So if you're following along, I feel like that would be pretty useful just to hold everything together. So this is our star. It has its own fuel inside. That's like the air that I blew into it. It's its fuel. So if I push on it, it doesn't explode. It doesn't compact. It's fine. It keeps its shape. It's doing all right. That's because of the fuel that it has inside of it and the gravity that my hands are the gravity so my hands when i push on it the gravity is fine because there's fuel inside mm. so with a supernova the star runs out of fuel so there'll be no more balloon i have to pop it so it might be kind of loud close your ears in the studio oh, <laughs> there we go <laughs> big so explosion even though, yeah, b it was a big explosion. Maybe that's how they sound. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so our balloon or the star fuel, it's gone. See you later. And now we have the star with no fuel. So when gravity goes to push on it and exert its force on it, what happens? We... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a small size now, but it's still, all the gravity is still there. It's still pushing. So that is what our black hole would become. It goes from really big to really small. And imagine this on the scale of like kilometers, millions of kilometers wide stars, like the sun, if the sun were to do this and it would get really tiny. And then that's the black hole. It has so much gravity and then everything would come in. So maybe should we see, I'll, th I'll throw it at the black hole that's over there and then maybe <laughs> it'll cancel out. Yes, I, uh, I, that's black the, hole. that makes sense okay. to me. Yeah. What do we think? Yep. Sure, just give yes. it a toss. Give me a little countdown. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Pew. Great. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look. It there it goes. <laughs> there it goes. See you later. Oh, see I don't, you know. I don't think hole. anything happened. I think we need to keep going. Pew, pew, pew. It's <laughs> been nice knowing you. <laughs> All right, if you have any questions about space or any questions for us, remember you can text us um, any of your questions at 306-570-1013, or you can reach us through our social media with the hashtag CouchPotatoLab, and our social media is at IZU. So Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, please message us through that, and then we'll answer all your questions, and it's going to be a great time. And let's talk a little bit more about space, because 
space isn't a flat area. It's actually curved. And in order to kind of demonstrate this, we're going to get right into our activity. So for our activity, make sure that you download that lab manual. It's called To Infinity and Beyond because we're out in space. Mm -hmm. So bit.ly slash couch potato lab. And it's going to give you the list of materials that you will need. And today, we're going to use a polyester bed sheet. And that's nice and stretchy. We're you're go also going to need something a little bit like a round, heavy object. And today, we're going to use an apple and also some light round objects like marbles or ping pongs, and those are going to be our planets. And last thing you need is a helper. You need at least about two people to make this activity happen. And I'm going to get our mm -hmm. scientists to come out to the front, sure. and we're going to demonstrate how space works. So Ooh. the first step is to Did lay you take these from my bunk? <laughs> <laughs> yes, how do you know? <laughs> Just yesterday. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to hold it like this, right, Kobe? Yes, we're gonna hold it, and you're gonna make it as um, tight as you can. Okay. Perfect. Just like that. And that is pretty much space. So if I had a That's planet, it. that okay. is space. <laughs> right. It's space time. If I had a planet, and I'm going to represent this planet with a marble, right? If it, if the planet was going through space or orbiting around, um, what direction did it go through? Whoa. It just fell right out. It went straight, right? Yeah. Fell out of space. Do do planets usually um, move through space in a straight line? No. Not that I'm pretty sure they they like kind move they move in a shape that's kind of like a circle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that is called orbits. So like um, the moon orbits around the Earth, and the Earth orbits around um, the sun. Mm -hmm. And we're going to represent um, a sun by using an apple. Because a sun is a planet or a star. Pop quiz. Uh, star, star, star. Planet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 it's a star. So um, the, pl um, the sun is really, really um, heavy. It has a lot of weight, and there's lots of gravity acting upon it. So I'm going to um, put this apple right in the middle. And what do you notice? Maybe we should move this down a little bit. Sure. So everybody, or I don't know if that helps. <laughs> there, we'll just do this. This is good. Well, what I noticed, Kobe, is that when you put the apple down there, the, the bed sheet started to kind of sink. Like it curved. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So there's a big dip um, when I put that apple there because it's because the sun is really, really heavy, hey? And what happens now is that space is actually curved. There's a little dip around that. So when planets move around um, the Earth oh. or the sun. There we go. Our sun's floating away. There we let's go. Let's see what happens. Oh. Oops. oh. Let me try again. Oh, lots of marbles. Oh. Whoa, whoa, that, it was moving around it. Yes. Oh. That's super cool. So instead of going straight across like oh. last time, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of moves in a little bit of that orbit shape that you were talking about. Oh, that yes, was a good one. Yes, exactly. So it's kind of in a circular shape or motion now. So that's it orbiting. And what do you notice when the marble is a bit closer to um, our mass or, or the sun? Um, it almost looks like the closer it gets to the apple, the faster it's moving. Yes, and Vanessa, how about if it's farther away from the, the sun. Maybe if, we, if you move your right hand, there we go. Maybe that helps. Yeah. I don't know if that helps. Oh, oh. yeah, there we go. Yes, um, when it's farther away from the sun, it goes a little bit straighter, and it's a little bit slower. Yes, it's a little bit slower. And this is because, because of the gravity on the sun, it's actually pulling the planets closer to the sun. So if it's closer, gravity is acting upon it. It's going to speed up when it orbits around the sun if it's closer. And if it's farther apart, then it's going to act a little slower. So let's say I have Earth right here and Mars. And Earth is a little bit closer to the sun. So I'm going to put um, th the Earth a little bit closer right here. And this will represent Mars, which is a little bit farther. And if I move them, oh. which one ro orbits faster? Do that one more time, Kobe. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Huh. I think Earth it goes a bit it faster. It looks like Earth was going a little bit faster there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> Earth rotates um, around the sun. How for how long does it take for the Earth to you know this one, orbit around the sun? I feel like a year. A year. Yeah. Yes, Whoa. 365 days. Okay. Mars, on the other hand, it actually orbits around um, the sun a little bit longer. So maybe twice or three times more. And that's because Mars is actually farther away 
from um, the sun. And how about a black hole? What do you guys think? <laughs> How, how would it, what, what's the question? So what would what if the, the black hole was right in the middle there? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that if a black hole just opened up in the middle of the solar system, like on top of the sun, it would be like this. <laughs> <laughs> and the sun's gone. The All sun's the planets yeah. are gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it would swallow everything up. That black hole would just suck everything up, just like I did to that apple. There you go, and it would be no longer there. It would disappear. Folks, in come a point on. Of an eye. That's, great. That's crazy. <laughs> 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 so you can try this out um, at home and send us your pictures and how that went and see how um, how the planets orbit around the sun. And another way to demonstrate this is with um, little robots that we brought onto space. And Vanessa, I see those little robots right now are with you. Hey. Yes, I have one just right here with me. They're called Ozobots. They're really awesome. They can read colors like a code and then follow whatever you tell them to do. But first, we need to learn about what we've got right here, which is kind of how the moon goes around the Earth. So right here is an ellipses. It looks like a circle, but kind of more flat, you could say, stretched out a little bit. And just like a circle, if the ellipses was all on its own, then the center of gravity, so where the strongest pull would be, would be right in the middle right in the middle, I think, like about there. Mm -hmm. So if that were the case, then the moon would go around the Earth <coughs> in the middle. But we actually have this huge thing called the sun. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really big. It has a huge, huge mass. So it has a strong gravitational pull because it's heavier. So that shifts the Earth out of the middle of the ellipses to a little bit over to the side. So what do you two think? When the moon is going around, do you think it will be slower or faster as it gets closer to the Earth? When the moon is closer to the Earth? Yes, will be slower or faster? I think it will be faster. How about you, Cole? What are your thoughts? I agree. I think it will be faster. And I'm, I'm just thinking of the last demonstration that we did that showed like when Earth was closer to the sun, it was moving faster than Mars, for instance. So I think the closer the moon is to the Earth, the faster it will be moving. Hmm. I think you're right. Let's take a try. I'm going to put it right here so it's starting far away. And it'll go around. Whoa. Reads the code. The next one gets a little faster. Oh, really fast. Oh, a little slower. <laughs> and that even is slower. Fascinating. Yeah. So there it goes. It keeps on going. Look at that. So it's very nice. It keep that's how our moon goes around our Earth. Mm. It just gets faster and faster. So talking oh. about moon orbits and all that, how do eclipses work? Mm -hmm. Vanessa, do you know by chance? That's a really good question. So if we just give it a second, it'll get back so that it'll be, our Ozobot will be in between. So if I'm shining a light from like here, right there, the moon or the, our Ozobot would have been blocking the Earth. So if we have a moon in between us and the sun, we're not going to be able to see the sun super well. So that's what happens with a solar eclipse because the sun is blocked. So there's a moon or our moon is in front of the sun and then we can't see it. It looks like a there's the sun and then the moon's inside, so it kind of looks like there's a r nice ring around the sun. What else happens, a fun one, um, which is called a lunar eclipse. If we watch our Ozobot friend here, when it gets to right about mm, there, it will be in the shadow of the Earth. So in a lunar eclipse, the sun, or the I guess the moon would be being blocked by the Earth, so it can't get anything from the sun, and that turns it red because it's in the shadow of the Earth. They're kind of, it depends where you are on the Earth, but they're c common-ish. Er, yearly, there's about two or five of each, but you can't see them from everywhere in the world, so sometimes there's really good ones that come over us in Canada. We can see them really well. And yeah, that's our, uh, that's our eclipses. Ooh, I know that. There's an there's a upcoming eclipse happening, hey? Whoa, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, is it December 14th of this year? Yes. December 14th, 2020, there's yes. going to be a solar or lunar eclipse? I'm not oh, sure. Uh oh, oh, <laughs> I think <laughs> it was solar. I think one of, one of, one of the eclipses, and that would be cool. Uh, I think it's happening around Brazil, correct? Yes, oh, cool. lower yeah. in South wow. America. I think a vacation is in order for us three. Mm -hmm. Since <laughs> we get back from this space trip, we're going to head over to Rio. Yes. Relax on the beach for a little bit. That's right, see a nice solar yeah. eclipse. Yeah. 
All right, perfect. Thank you, Vanessa, for um, for that Ozobot demonstration. Nice if you're looking more about what an Ozobot is, we actually have a coding episode um, in a couple in a few days, and we actually talk more about the Ozobot as well. So tune in for that. It's going to be very very exciting. Now, if you have any questions so far about space, black holes, eclipses, ellipses, and all that, remember you can text in your questions at 306-570-1013. And if you're going to send a question through social media, make sure to use that hashtag, CatchPotatoLab. And you can reach us through our social media with the handle at EyesU through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, the huge, the huge. All right. Oh, cool, cool. Look at that. Yeah, what's it's up? so nice. Wh what are we looking at? <laughs> We're looking at the stars, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're so nice. Like, I wonder, do they just, like, supernova and become a star? Or, like, how you does know, that work? It's <laughs> really interesting for me. <laughs> it's really, really interesting. Sometimes we get so caught up in all of the science that we're doing here in our lab on this spaceship uh, slash studio that we forget to sometimes, you know, slow down a bit. You stop mm -hmm. and smell mm -hmm. the roses or smell <laughs> the burning hydrogen, uh, as it were, that's <laughs> out there in the, in the cosmos. Because stars are really, really interesting. And Vanessa talked about um, black holes earlier, and she mentioned supernovas and all of this different types of stuff. But what you might not know is that stars have sort of a life cycle, kind of like we have a life cycle, or plants or animals have a life cycle. Mm. Now, all stars, and we're going to put up a graphic here, we can see all of the different types of stars here. All stars start as something called a stellar nebula. And a nebula is like this big cloud of dust and gas that swirls around. And it's usually really, really cool colors. It glows purple or orange or pink. And from there, what's going to happen is we see two specific timelines that progress on from there. So we've got the top line and the bottom line. Now, the first thing that happens is when a star is born or formed, it either is going to become an average star or a massive star. Now, you can sort of think uh, the difference between average star and massive star as like the difference between myself and Kobe. I am an average star where he is a massive star, <laughs> not only in star power, personality, charisma, but also like we mentioned, he is absolutely jacked. Oh, you're too nice. Head to toe, <laughs> head to toe muscle. There's not, his bones are muscle. It's all muscle, folks. You know so it. an average star and a massive star you can think of as a massive star is just really, really big, and an average star I isn't as big. An average star, for example, our sun would be considered an average sized star. So it's, we, we, it's really, really big from what we can tell and relative to things that are in our solar system. But if we think of the entire universe at a gra grand scale, an average star is actually really, really small. The sun is actually one of the smaller stars. So there's lots of bigger stars. So from there, whether we become an average star or a massive star, the next stages are either red giant or red supergiant, okay? So as the star ages, it's going to first change color and start to glow red. And if it was an average star before, it's going to turn to a red giant. Or if it was a massive star, it's going to turn into a red supergiant. And again, the difference here is just how large the star is. Average stars turn into red giants, which are bigger than average stars. But massive stars turn into red supergiants, which are really, 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 really big, okay? So... The, the life cycle is progressing. We are moving older and older and older into the star life cycle. Now, if we bring up the graphic again, we're just going to sh follow the top line now. So after a red giant, what ends up happening I is we follow that top line. The next step is called a planetary nebula. And again, the star is going to start to break down, and a lot of the gas and the dust that was contained inside is going to disperse and form one of those nebula clouds again, until all that we have left at the very, very end of the top line of our diagram is a white dwarf. So if we look at the picture, first of all, the star has changed colors. It's not as vibrant anymore. It's a lot smaller as well. So that's why we call it a white dwarf, because the size of the st star has actually shrunk quite significantly. So these white dwarfs are really, really small. And basically, all that we have left is the inner core of that average star from a long time ago. So that ends that first top line life cycle. But if we go back to the bottom line, after a red supergiant, what could happen after we get to a red supergiant, after enough time passes and the star gets big enough, is like Vanessa was talking about before with the balloon pot, we get a supernova, which is this gigantic explosion of the star. And after a supernova happens, there's actually two different options that might happen. So the first is we get something called a neutron star, which is like a really, really dense core, kind of like a white dwarf. And the other option, which is like a cool option if you ask me, is what Vanessa was showing before, and that's a black hole. So sometimes if there's enough energy released, and enough matter collapses, you will get a black hole, which we already talked about is something that's so massive that even gravity and it has so, such so much gravity, sorry, that even light cannot escape. 
So when we look into the night sky and we see all of these different types of stars, we're actually looking at a lot of different um, stages of that life cycle. Some of the stars that we see might be red giants or just average stars or massive stars. Now I have a question though for uh, Covey and Vanessa here. Okay. Mm. So I said that um, the sun was an average star. Okay, so it's that's it would be an example of an average star. So if you were to predict millions and millions and millions and millions of years into the future, what do you think is eventually going to happen to our sun if it's an average star? Now, if we if we can bring back the graphic, if you want, <laughs> to see if you want to just check um, I remember. what the what the <laughs> life cycle is. But if our sun is an average star, what do you think it's going to end up being? Vanessa, you have the answer. Yes. I think it'll be a white dwarf eventually, but it has to go become a red giant, mm -hmm. and then a nebula, all that mm -hmm. jazz. I bet that takes quite a while, hey? It does take a long, long time. So yes, our sun will eventually expand, become a red giant, and then collapse again into a white dwarf. But this is something that's going to happen like millions and millions of years from now. So we don't have to worry about it quite yet. But when it does become a red giant, what we have to understand is it's going to get really, really big. So that could be, that could we talked about you know things that have larger masses actually exert more gravity so how would that change our orbit how would that change how hot it is on earth all of these things people millions from years and now well they will have to uh, take into consideration but thankfully we don't have to worry about it for now <laughs> oh that was <laughs> oh, ominous <laughs> ominous we'll see what happens <laughs> Wow, stars are beautiful. You can they twinkle in the sky, and then we see it as like <laughs> constellations and stuff like that, and, and like a wishing star as well. But sometimes these wishing stars are like um, mistaken as for comets, and oh. comets are actually like big cosmic um, snowballs um, that are made out of different things like dirt and sand and gases, and it's really, really, really cold. And today I'm, I'm going to make um, a comet with dry ice. And dry ice is one of my favorite things. Um, can anyone guess what its um, freezing temperature is? Or it becomes a solid at what temperature? I don't know. Do you know, Cole? The freezing temperature of dry ice is mm. one degree. I'm doing <laughs> prices right. If I, say, oh. if I say one and everybody else is over, I win automatically. Uh, one <laughs> degrees. <laughs> um, not quite, because we know that water freezes at zero degrees, oh. right? Darn it. So <laughs> um, it's actually negative 79. So b Whoa. anything below mm. negative 79, it's actually dry ices can be formed. But once it hits over negative 79 degrees, it starts to sublimate. And what sublimates means it's that uh, it skips the liquid phase. It goes from solid to gas real fast. Huh. Mm. Yeah, so that's how dry ice is going to work. But let's talk about um, what the comet is made out of. So here I have a bowl where I'm going to make my comet. And uh, comets are made out of water. And I'm going to pour about, let's say, one liter of water. That's a lot of water. <laughs> Lots of water, because comets are pretty much water, rocks, sand, and a few other things. What's your favorite thing that's in it? My favorite thing? Water, rock, sand, or the other things. <laughs> 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 the other things. Well, oh. next <laughs> thing, um, dirt. Right, because um, comets are usually very dark in color, like maybe black or dark brown. Ugh, nice, love that. And I'm gonna mush it up, and then we're gonna see what um, this looks like eventually. But it looks, it looks beautiful at the moment. <laughs> 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 Next thing I'm gonna add is cornstarch because um, comets actually have organics as well, and this cornstarch will allow um, this uh, comet model to stick together. Yes. So one tablespoon of cornstarch and corn syrup is going to do the same thing as well. It's going to help the comet stick together. Ooh. Nice. Love that stuff. You find it in candy? Oh, yeah. Good oh. times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing it has is alcohol. A and so yeah, so the alcohol that's in comets are actually called methanol. I have scissors if you want. Whoa. Okay, I need scissors. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, and about a tablespoon of alcohol. Nice. Yeah, so it has organics. It also, comets also have amino acids. So we have amino acids as well. And Cole, can you remind us what amino acids are again? They're like the building blocks of... Yes. Of... They are the building blocks of proteins. Now, proteins, um, you might have heard of before that 
we need to like eat foods that are high in protein because it'll makes us makes us strong like Covey. Um, <laughs> but proteins, that is true. Proteins are also just things that our cells make. They are little machines that do jobs. So we have proteins that will do some pumping inside of our cells. We have proteins that build DNA. We have proteins that do a lot of different things inside of our cells. So what is crazy for me to think about is that amino acids are in our bodies but also the same thing is in comets that are floating like and, and flying through the sky like millions of miles away. I, I can't believe that. I know, right? All right, let's take a look at the color of this comet. Brown. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, who would have expected that? Appealing. <laughs> okay, the next thing is that comets are made out of really, really cold gases and frozen things, and I'm going to represent that with a dry ice. So I mashed it up with a hammer. I'm going to dump a lot, about like maybe five pounds of dry ice in here. Whoa. And whoa. So Kovi, is that the sublimation that you were talking about yeah, earlier? Yeah, so this is what's happening here is that the solid dry ice pellets are converting into gaseous. To is gases. it bubbling? It's bubbling. Oh, I can hear it. Ooh, that chilly. is pretty spooky, I have to say. Can I add more? Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not, eh? Whole thing. Oh, that was a big <laughs> chunk. <laughs> <laughs> so as it's forming, you can see that there's a lot of gases that are really, really cold. And eventually what happens is that um, this comet is usually kind of kind of orbits around the sun as well. And while it orbits around the sun, um, solar wind is going to blow against this comet. And you can see that tails are formed. And what the tails are are pretty much just like streams of this gas. And I'm going to wrap this up together. Good thing you're wearing those gloves. Oh, yeah. Safety first, hey? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> That's a cool sound. Squeezing some gas out of there. Ooh. Whoa. I can feel a little breeze over here. All right. Uh, yeah, a little bit. It's a little yeah, bit chilly. Feels nice on a hot day because we went to Venus. We passed by Venus, and Venus was mm. That's where you saw the rabbit. Hot. We forgot yes. to install AC in this spaceship. <laughs> yeah, oh, we should have followed that uh, Couch Potato Lab episode where they made it with all those two-liter bottles. Oh, we should have. Darn it. All right, let's take a look at our... Oh, Kobe. Whoa. <gasps> wow. Whoa. <laughs> look at our comet. <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> this is our comet. So this is wow. a piece of a comet. I got I got lots. Let's take a look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a big comet. So that, there's yeah. a lot of comets <laughs> and many. <laughs> 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 Love that. Very good aesthetic. <laughs> um, there are a lot of comets that... Um, astronauts have found, and another example of a comet that we have found and named is called the Comet um, Born Borelli. Borelli. There oh it look is. At that. And Let's it's named like it. after Alphonse Borelli, who actually found this um, asteroid, and I mean, the comet, and named it after himself. Does it kind of look like an upside down bowling pin to anybody else? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like half yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, what does this look like, Cole? <laughs> what is th what, the one that you made? Yeah. Uh, it looks like when you uh, make uh, macaroni and leave it in the thermos for a long time, and then it comes out as one big chunk. I love mac and cheese. It's my favorite. Yeah. Maybe I'll name this Comet Kobe. Yeah, that's, that's a good yeah, name. That's that's a good love name. this. That's a good one. So good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and yeah, so that's how comets are, and it's a great time. Um, I thought of making an edible model so that I could um, surprise you too, but I decided not to because not feeling it today. Oh, well that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for the thought. That is very cool, Kobe, though. I do, I do love Thank a good you. comet. Me comets too. are great. All right. Um, now that we talked about stars and comets and all of that, what is the coolest thing I would say in space are the different planets mm. around, right? Oh. And and it's so cool seeing them. I think it's time for a little competition to see who knows comets a little bit more. And it's time for a science showdown. <laughs> All right, so how <laughs> this side showdown is going to work, I'm going to show them a picture that ICE headquarters has uh, found of the planet, and they also found a little bit information about these planets as well. So once we show that, then our scientist over here can read over the clues and the picture as well and buzz in their answer to see if they know what 
planet is what? And some some may not even be planets. Oh, Whoa, that's okay. tricky. Oh, so it's going to be okay. uh, a little tricky here. Ooh. All right, and the winner, hmm, oh, winner gets to dare the loser to do something. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Why <laughs> not? Sure, all right, there's some Challenge stakes. I like it. All right, the very, very first planet for our science showdown is this beautiful, beautiful blue planet. Um, it's about more than 30 times as far from the sun as Earth, and the only planet in our solar system not visible to the naked eye. Ooh. Mm. It's about four times wider than Earth. The atmosphere is made out of mostly molecular hydrogen, atomic helium, and methane, so pretty much just gases. Okay. And it has uh, at least five main rings and four more ring arcs, which are clumps of dust. Ooh, I heard the moo first. The okay, moo. Cole. The moo is me. What do, you, um, what do you think? I'm actually not super confident, but I did. I, my finger slipped, and, <laughs> and, I, and now I'm, I'm kind of have to go with it. I am going to guess that that planet <coughs> is Pluto? Pluto. Mm, all right, hmm. good guess. Pluto? Vanessa, what's your guess? I think that that is Neptune. Neptune. That's my guess. How confident are you? 79% um, confident. 79%. And the correct answer is Neptune. Oh, yeah. Nicely done, Vanessa. Pluto's not even a nice, planet nice, anymore. Nice. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> yeah, so he says Brutal. there would be some that aren't planets. So Brutal. Yeah, so Trick maybe. question. Um, the next one is, ooh, a fan favorite, and mm. it's one of the largest planets in the solar system. Mm. It's more than twice as massive as all the other planets combined. It's fifth in line from the sun. It has stripes and swirls. Ooh, and look at that. It has a little birthmark. It's red. <laughs> a great red spot. <laughs> ooh, I heard the moo first, Cole. Y'all, y'all, you're always going to hear the moo first. So <laughs> don't call me, uh... <laughs> Fast fingers for nothing. <laughs> um, I know that one because that's right beside my favorite planet. That is definitely Jupiter. Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jupiter. all right. Um, Vanessa, do you agree with Cole's guess? Um, no, because it's red, and I know that Mars is red. So I think it might be Mars. You think it's Mars. All right, and the correct answer is dun 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 dun, Jupiter. <gasps> oh. Yes. Jupiter. Lovely. It is. I Jupiter. did it. It is Jupiter. So that great red spot, it's pretty much like a raging storm that's ha been happening for like over hundreds of years. And did it say that it was bigger than the entire Earth itself? Yes. That's how big Jupiter is, is that yeah. one small storm is mm -hmm. bigger than Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's great. as big as Earth. Bigger than Earth. It's crazy, crazy. All right. Here's the third planet. It's going to be <laughs> a great one. Uh, might be really recognizable to some of you guys right here. Oh. All right. This sixth oh. planet from the sun and the second largest planet in our solar system. It is not only it's not the only planet to have rings. It's made of chunks of ice and rock. It's also considered a gas giant like Jupiter. So hydrogen, helium, and that's that's what it's made of. And I got to notice that nice ring. Ooh, put that ring on it. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> yes, Vanessa. My guess is that I don't really know that what planet this is, so I'm going to guess one that we haven't talked about yet. I think it might be Mercury. Mercury. Ooh. Ooh, good guess, good guess. Cole? You'll notice that I didn't even have to ring in that time because I was so confident <laughs> that Vanessa would get the answer wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is Ooh, none other than fired. the greatest of planets, the crown prince, Saturn. <laughs> Saturn. And the correct answer is... <coughs> Saturn, nicely done, Cole. All right, yes. all right, wow. all right. Okay, Vanessa, you, you, got, you got time to redeem yourself. No I worries. hope so. All right. The next one, um, the fourth planet, it looks a little red to me. Um, it's a dusty, cold desert world with a very thin atmosphere. Um, it has lots of polar ice caps and weather and canyons and volcanoes. Ooh, very, very cool. It's a rocky planet with, again, volcanoes. Any guesses? Ooh, okay. I got the horse. So I, I thought that it might be Mercury again <coughs> because it's red, mm -hmm. but I saw that the polar ice caps were on there, and I know that Mercury is pretty close to the sun, so it couldn't be that. So the other red planet is Mars. Mars. Is it Mars? All right. Good guess. Good guess. Okay. Cole, what do you think? Well, um, I know that there was a movie that came out recently where somebody was trapped on this planet, and he had to like make a greenhouse and grow his own food and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. I never did see it. So um, <laughs> I'm going to guess whatever planet was in that movie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, do you know what Cole's talking about? Mars again. <laughs> I, I think I just so what is it? What is it? All right. And the answer to that planet is da -da 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 Mars. Cool. I'll take nice. it. Nice. Very, very good. All right. Point to both of you, I guess? Sure. I'll take a half yes, point. Yes, yes. Half point oh, okay. for Cole because he didn't really get the name of it. 
but <laughs> he can redeem himself again through Beautiful. this fifth planet. That could be a planet. I don't know if it's actually a planet or not, but we'll see. Next planet is this one, the second planet from the sun and our closest planetary neighbor. And closest planetary neighbor means Earth. It's very close to Earth. <laughs> uh, this planet is so <laughs> <laughs> in the opposite direction <laughs> than most other planets do. <laughs> wow, I wonder what it is. And it's also really, really hot. Oh, I hit the moon. <laughs> well, uh, you said it's got it's the closest thing to Earth, so it, it has to be the moon. <laughs> 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 Could be the moon, <laughs> but this one said it's really, really, really hot because of the greenhouse effect. Well, um, I've never been to the moon, so <laughs> I, I am no person to judge whether it's hot or cold. Well, we're going to the moon in like a couple days, so. Well, we're, we're about to find out then. Mm -hmm. All right, Vanessa, what's your guess? I think that that one is Venus. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> They're planets. Yes, and right. the answer to that one is... Venus, very mm. good, because Ooh. Venus is super, super hot, like me. You know <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, this is th the last one, so maybe we'll oh. do winner takes all. Sure. Oh, okay. 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 All right, so the last one is only about half the width of the United States. The atmosphere is very thin, and it's composed of nitrogen, methane, and carbon di monoxide. Ooh, it's super, super cold, negative 232 degrees Celsius, Ooh. and has a heart-shaped glacier. Oh, look, it's considered a dwarf planet. <laughs> oh, I heard the horse first, Vanessa. Okay. Vanessa, uh, can I make you an offer? Sure. I, I think we should say it together. All right. Because I can't handle defeat. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get it right and I'm second, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I okay, think fine. we should try to say it together. And then if we both win, we can dare Kobe. Yes, <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> this is perfect. No, okay, this awesome. backfired. Right. Oh, okay, no. on the count of three, we're going to say it at the same time. Okay, here we go. Three, two, two one. Pluto. Pluto. Yes. <laughs> yes, Kobe, you're going down. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> yeah, it's Pluto. Yes, oh, wait. Sir. Not that Pluto. It's Pluto. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You it did is it. Pluto, the dwarf you did planet. It. Very good, guys. Um, nicely done. Um, unfortunately, uh, because they kind of tied and there's no loser, I guess I'm the loser. So what's your dare? I think you should eat something on the table right now. Maybe a spoonful of cornstarch. <laughs> what do you <laughs> think? <laughs> I was just going to say, I dare you to compliment me. <laughs> <laughs> because he very rarely does. But this is, I like oh this too. Let's do it. Sounds good. If you, I if will you feel comfortable. Yes. This is a very sanitized, um, definitely yes. a normal thing. Measuring. Right <laughs> yes, Sir? delicious. I cleaned it before. Um. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Here you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was. What is it? What is this taste? Astonishing. Is this? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that was great. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> Oh, remember to text in all your questions because our favorite segment, Ask Your Scientist, is uh, coming up next. If you want to send us your question, you can text us at 306-570-1013. If you're going to reach us through social media, you can use that hashtag, Couch Potato Lab, so we can find your questions. And our social media is at Eyes Youth everywhere from YouTube to Facebook to TikTok to Twitter, the main one. All right. It's going to be great, but I think since we were talking about black holes, um, there's one person that I think needs a little STEM spotlight, and it's going to be a great one. So here is our STEM spotlight. Today. On today's STEM spotlight, we want to introduce you to Dr. Katie Bowman. Dr. Bowman was a PhD student in computer science and artificial intelligence at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2019 when she led the creation of an algorithm that would eventually lead to an image of a supermassive black hole. Whoa! So the first ever image of a black hole was discovered by Dr. Katie Bowman. Great work, Dr. Bowman. Yes, Dr. Katie Bowman, she like she was part of a cool organization pool company um, when she was 23 years old i'm almost 23 wow. and i never did anything just as amazing as she did she had like cool telescopes eight of them and she saw a picture of the black hole and that was seen last year which is crazy to think about super i know all right it is time for our favorite segment ask our scientist <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you again for sending in all your questions. I'm very excited to get to each one of them. The first question comes from Gabe. Are sinkholes the same as black holes? All right, uh, Vanessa, since you're talking about black holes the entire episode, um, what is the difference between the two? Okay, so a sinkhole, I totally understand where your confusion might have come from, Gabe, because on Earth, if a sinkhole happens, all of the ground just collapses in. If there's a car there, it falls in. The people fall in, trees fall in, all this kind of stuff. I totally see what you mean. But that's just a little area on Earth where, the f where it falls in. Now, a black hole is in space. It, I guess it could technically happen on Earth, but probably not. But it's in space, and it's that a star collapses in on itself, and then it's the gravity that makes it such like that makes it a black hole. And it's the gravitational pull and all the things that suck in the light that make it a black hole. Mm. So yes, it's a space casual causally disconnected from the rest of the universe. So it's barely even part of the universe. So oh. Vanessa, um, quick question: Would you rather fall into a sinkhole or a black hole? <laughs> um, how deep is a sinkhole? Good uh, question. Oh, could be. I don't know. Fifty meters. Fifty meters. Okay, I feel like things wouldn't end well for me either way. Maybe I could take um, a camera with me or something in the black hole, and then we could figure out what would be in there. So I would like to go into a black hole. Oh, mm -hmm. brave, brave answer. Thank you. All right, the next question it comes from. Um, the Hayes brother. Fun fact, by the way, do you know the light lightning is five times harder than the surface of the sun? Wow, cool. How? What degrees can it get up to? That is a very fun fact, Hayes brothers. You are correct that lightning is very, very hot. We think that the sun is pretty hot, um, but lightning is actually even hotter. Lightning burns, or not burns, but lightning, when we ha have a strike of lightning, it's around 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very, very hot. And fun fact about lightning, there's so much energy, so much um, heat that's produced when a lightning strike happens that it's actually one of the only things um, that is able to have enough energy to break a nitrogen triple bond. Oh, okay. oh. that's right. Some chemistry yeah, nitrogen here. triple bond. So imagine, uh, th imagine uh, there's an N right here and an N right here, and my fingers are one, two, three bonds. Okay, <laughs> that's very, very strong. All right, that's like almost as strong as the bond that I have between me, Kobe, and Vanessa. Okay, Aww. so th this bond is so strong that most things in nature can't break it. But when there's nitrogen in the atmosphere and there's a big lightning strike, it's actually able to break that those nitrogen atoms apart, and then plants can use them, and then we can eat the plants, and then we can have a good time. So you're right, uh, nitrogen or sorry, lightning is pretty crazy stuff, and it is very, very hot. Oh, nice. Thank you, Cole. Lightning is super, super hot. Mm. Um, our number four question um, from Eli, is the couch potato okay? The one on the left side, uh, why is he growing hair on its body? But that's a why. Oh is Lord. this one potato potato, Kobe? Is this potato potato? Um, yes, that's potato okay. potato. So potato potato, like the rest of potatoes on the earth, they want to make more potatoes. I think these are the eyes of the potato. Is that? Yes, thank you, Kobe. So Potato Potato is trying to get more potatoes into the earth, trying to grow more for us. So that's the beginning of a long tube that's going to go, if Potato Potato was in the ground like it is supposed to be, then they would have grown a long tube, and then more potatoes would have <coughs> been able to grow from that tube underground, and then we'd get lots of potatoes. So Potato Potato is okay. Uh-oh, sorry, Potato Potato. I hit off a little hair. But <laughs> yes, so these are the eyes of the potato. It's it's doing its job. It's all good. Thanks for your concern, Eli. All right, thank you, um, Eli. You also came up with another question. Now, are you forty-one years old, Kobe? Because you took six years. Is that correct? <laughs> 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 yes, Eli. How did you know? The I am now forty-one out. years old. But a cool thing is that I am. I actually made a friend, and he, um, this friend made a time machine, so I can step into the time machine and look young, like. Again, because you know my oh face glows. Yeah. So that <laughs> that's <laughs> how that works. <laughs> I thought it was just moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> moisturizer too. That really really helps with the anti aging effect. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, another question that we had, I thought was very very interesting, is can I look at the solar solar mm. or lunar eclipse? Cole, do you know by chance? Very very good question because we love to talk about safety and how to uh, when we're doing science, when we are observing things, when we're doing experiments. We want to keep uh, ourselves and others safe. So the answer is, would you ever just stare up directly and look at the sun? No. Hopefully you're thinking no. So the same answer applies to solar eclipses, because if you stare directly at a solar eclipse, it's the same thing as staring directly at the sun. Now, the reason that we don't 
want that to happen, we don't want to stare at something that is as bright as the sun, is because we can essentially get what is sort of like our sunburn on our eyes. We can get damage to a part of our eye called the retina, mm -hmm. and that could lead to some vision problems. That could lead to a lot of different issues in our eye. If you've ever accidentally, and this has probably happened to everybody, looked at a bright light or the sun for even just for a split second, you'll notice sometimes you'll see like almost like these weird colors that are floating around your eyes. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens if you only look at the sun for like a fraction of a second. So you can imagine how bad it would be if you looked at it for a really, really long time. So you have to be very, very careful when a solar eclipse actually does occur occur. They um, have special solar eclipse glasses that you can actually view through that take a lot of the energy and the harshness that the sun is spitting out and cut it, cut it away so you can actually look at the solar eclipse without damaging your eyes. So oh. do not look directly at a solar eclipse. Nope, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Wear your glasses to yes. protect yourself. Very good. Um, next one comes from how Chloe. How long did it take all of you to get to space? Oh, good well, question. Chloe. Um, well, I know that it does, it took the farthest, bef before us, <laughs> the farthest that humans have ever been in space has been, do you guys know? No. The moon, right? Oh, oh yeah. The moon. Yeah. We've been to the moon. Um, and that takes about three days. And I know for a fact that to, with our current technology at the speeds that we can currently travel, it would take from Earth to Pluto, which we know isn't a planet, but uh, it's a dwarf planet, the edge of the solar system, that would take about nine and a half years wow. to travel that far. And that's Crazy. what the fastest craft that we have and that's actually just talking about an un unmanned probe oh which probably goes a lot faster than anything that would have humans in it mm -hmm. so he who knows how long it would actually take if we had humans we'd probably have to you know we'd be sleeping for a while we would that's a lot of sleeps mm -hmm. that's true uh-huh yeah Lots yeah. Of sleeps yeah yeah it's yeah. been, yeah, it's, been yeah. A, it's been a long journey um uh, last few questions um did you know that a day on venus is longer than a year on venus from the hayes brothers yes mm -hmm. that's so cool that's very cool Wow, thank, thank you. you so much. A <laughs> <laughs> last one from Rhythm. Are comets as cold as dry ice? Vanessa, do you know the answer? Great question, Rhythm. No, comets are not as cold as dry ice. I would have thought it would be the other way around, but actually the average comet is around negative 70 degrees Celsius, which is still insanely cold. But dry ice is actually around negative <coughs> 78.5 degrees Celsius. Ooh, so dry ice close. is colder. Jilly. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. That's crazy. Thank you so much for all your questions. Um, we also have two giveaways um, that's happening. So the first giveaway is through Instagram. Um, you get to win a free week of camp, and you get to maybe have Vanessa or Cole as your instructor, and it's going to be a great time. It's going to be virtual, so check out our website if you're interested, um, but go on to our Instagram to try to win for that. And the last one giveaway is our potato clock that we'll announce for next week. So if you're interested, you just have to answer this really, really quick question. It's episode 27. Don't be afraid of psych. What did Kat and Katie eat um, in their de delayed gratification experiment? And we have a little clip to help you out. I may have gotten a little hungry in this time, and I ate my <laughs> Yes. I <laughs> wonder what it is. <laughs> so we'll be announcing the winner very, very soon next week. So make sure you text in, um, maybe text in your answer, use, reach us through our social media with the hashtag Couch Potato Lab, and we'll add that to our entries, and hopefully you'll win. Thank you so much for um, joining us on our journey in space and learning more about stars and comets and all that, and it's really, really cool. We'll see you next um, with my other friends back on Earth very, very soon. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. See you later. Yay.